Where's my white scarf? Right here. Why don't you keep my things where I can find them? See who that is. Yes, Miss Marlowe. It's a messenger boy. If that's all, I'll be right back after the last show. Put on some soft music before you go. Have a good time. Thank you. Miss Marlowe. When I want your opinion, I'll ask you for it. Norman. This is Miss Marlowe. Oh, yes, Miss Marlowe. If Mr. Blair comes here tonight, I don't wish to see him now or ever. You wish to see, please? Miss Marlowe. Tell her Martin Blair. I'm sorry. Miss Marlowe left instructions. She doesn't want to see you. She'll see me. She's my wife. It's our anniversary. That isn't what you just told me. She doesn't want to see you now or ever. I don't blame me. I just work here. Marlowe, she's expecting me. Yes, sir. Looks like your friend's headed for a butte this time. Yeah. Thanks for calling. Thought for a minute that ambulance might have been for him. He ain't that bad yet. I better get him over to the hotel. Why do you bother with a stew like that? I kind of like the guy, that's all. He sure can play a piano. Anyhow, that Marlowe woman again? Why don't you get wise yourself, Marty, and forget about her? Were you ever in love? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.
What is he going to learn? You can't drink it as fast as they make it. Well, it's his stomach. I try to pretend Saying that I don't mind it But everyone knows behind it I'm trying to mend a heartbreak. That's what you get when you set love so high. I gave a try, then kissed it goodbye. Alice? They say you love and you learn. Maybe I learned. Maybe I took the long way to the moon. It ended so soon with heartbreak. I've months to regret. Mr. Bennett. You and Mrs. Bennett? Yes. Your husband at home? No, but I expect him any minute. Mind if we come in? What is this? What do you want? Any idea where your husband might be, Mrs. Bennett? What does this mean? Who are you? We're from the police. Has anything happened? He's been hurt. There's been an accident. 
take it easy, Mrs. Bennett. There's been no accident. Well, then what is it? My husband said he had some business to attend to. I'm Captain Flood. Homicide division. Homicide? There's been a murder. Woman by the name of Marlowe. Marlowe? That was the business your husband was attending to. Yeah, he was there. The maid saw him and recognized him. He was trying to get away unobserved. And he'd been there before, too, Mrs. Bennett. Kate didn't do it. I admire your loyalty, but... We've been waiting for you, Bennett. Well, I've been walking the streets. I was going to phone you. Sure. Now we're going down to headquarters for a talk. Why didn't you use this? You're sensitive to loud noises? Amen. I didn't kill her. Then you've got nothing to worry about. Shall we go? Kirk. Don't worry. I can explain everything. Still, if I were you, Mrs. Bennett, I'd get myself a good lawyer. She was blackmailing you, wasn't she? All right, she was blackmailing me. I, I told you that. You might as well admit the rest, then. Wouldn't let you off the hook, would she? I didn't kill her. That record she was playing, heartbreak. Must have meant a lot to you once. I never heard the thing before. Funny, she was playing it for you. She wasn't playing it for me. Better call on me, sonny boy. Or else. Or else she'd tell your wife. I didn't want to have my wife hurt. So you went to Marlowe's apartment for a I showdown. I couldn't pay her anymore. I, I hoped I could persuade her to... What? With this? I, I never intended to use it. I, I only wanted to scare her. Yeah, you scared her, all right. She had her own little automatic ready, just in case. She pulled it on you, you grabbed it. Your fingerprints were all over it, Bennett. There was a struggle, you grabbed hold of the scarf. And didn't let go. Don't have to deny it all over again. The maid seeing you was a tough break, Bennett. If you'd only listen to me about that brooch. We listened. You're asking us to believe in an awful choosy robber. Yeah, one who overlooked five grand in cash and a mink coat. All he took was a heart-shaped brooch and a woman's life. You won't even try to find it? We'll try. Maybe there was such a brooch. Maybe you took it yourself after you strangled it. Oh, you can keep this up all night, but you'll only get one answer. I didn't kill her. Somebody did. You better sleep on it, Bennett. We're holding you for the murder of Mavis Marlowe. If only I could do something. You've done all you could, darling. You've been wonderful, especially after... Please, Kirk. You're my husband. I'll always stand by you. You know that. The jury, they did seem to believe you, didn't they? I'm not so sure. Well, the foreman seemed for us. He'll win the others over, I'm sure. Even if they... Jury's coming in. Yes, he just eats up those easy cases. Give me the city desk. Clancy? This is Kelly. City desk. Then it's guilty. The jury just brought in the verdict. Guilty. First degree. I know how you 
you feel. Believe me, we've checked everything. You've overlooked something because Kirk didn't kill Mavis Marlowe. You've got to keep trying. We're three months behind on unsolved homicides now. Do you know, Mrs. Bennett, you think the people in this town would have something better to do than figuring out ways to get rid of each other? The whole thing may seem very humorous to you. I'm sorry. Your husband's been convicted. The case is closed out of my hands. And unless new evidence is discovered, it's going to stay closed. Thank you. Hello. Um, I've been trying to get some information about a woman who used to do extra work. They told me that you might be able to help me. That Mavis Marla was plain poison. You're telling me? Treated that poor Marty Blair like dirt. And after he wrote that beautiful song for her. Heartbreak. The dope married her, didn't they? You know what I said to myself when I heard she'd been cooled off? I said to myself, Marty Blair finally caught up with her. And wrung her neck. Pardon me, but I, I couldn't help overhearing. Oh, that's all right, honey. Sit down. Thank you. You see, I'm Mrs. Kirk Bennett, and I heard you talking about a man named Marty Blair. Do you know where I could find him? Look, I got to get back on the set. Me too. Oh, oh, stuck. Well, you really want to know where you can find Marty Blair? Oh, please, so very much. Well, you might try Al's place on Iris Way, near Weston. If he's there, you can tell him by the song Heartbreak. He's always playing it. Well, oh, thank you. Well, I have to get back. I'm late. See you later. <laughs> Excuse me. You'll find him right across the street at the palace. But if I was you, I wouldn't bother him this early in the morning. Not unless it's important. Oh, but it is very. Thank you. Right through that door there, lady. I'm looking for the clerk. I haven't seen him. <laughs> Anything I can do? Does a man named Marty Blair live here? Oh, heartbreak. What do you want of him? I want to talk to him. Well, I wouldn't disturb him if I was you. He, he likes to sleep late. Oh, please. Um, this is uh, important. Which is his room? Right there. He, he had a bad night. Bolt. Bolt. you about Mavis. I don't know anything. About anything. Get out of here, will you? No, please, you've got to help me. I have to know. She's dead. That's all there is to know. But wait, what I... What are you bothering me for? I'm Mrs. Kirk Bennett. So you're the one he left sitting at home. Some guys are never satisfied. I had to see you. Why? Because I had a wife who needed killing? And you had a husband who took care of it? She didn't give you a very fair deal, did she? You weren't exactly dealt a handful of aces. And stop feeling sorry for me. I don't go for that stuff. Feeling pretty sorry for yourself, aren't you? I've been on one. That's what you mean. 
ever since. Ever since? The night she was killed. When I saw your husband go in. You were there? Yeah. Outside. And you didn't go in? Not a chance. I was given the brush off by a very large doorman. So, I found a saloon. And then another. And I kept on finding them. Please, you've got to tell me more about her. Who her friends were. Who might have been in her apartment. Why don't you ask the police? Boy, your yeah. husband. He seemed to know the password. Please, no one else can help me. You're the only one. I don't know anything about anything. I suppose you don't even know why she was playing your song. I don't know any... My song? Heartbreak. That night, she was playing it. Oh, no, she wouldn't. Not heartbreak. You're crazy. Maybe. Maybe someone else was playing it for her. Maybe you. Don't give me that. I told you I didn't see her. It was your song. You were playing it just before you... You got it all figured out, haven't you? You were in her apartment. Why don't you admit it? You strangled her. Hey, what's going on in here? She's Bennett's wife. We were talking, but we finished. No, we haven't. Forget it. I won't. Not until I'll I... I'll take it easy. Marty was right here in this room when his wife was killed. I'm the one told him about it. I'd heard it on the 2 o'clock news. 2 o'clock. He had plenty of time to get back here. She was killed between midnight and 12.30. Come in. See that bolt? It was locked when you came in, wasn't it? Yes, but what's that got to do with... Plenty. I always lock it when he's on a real tear. He was on one that night, and I locked him in. A good two hours before the murder. He's in the clear, Mrs. Bennett. Ask the police. They'll tell you. The police? You mean they were here? Sure. They're not stupid, you know. And I... I see I've made a mistake. Please forgive me. I... I was grabbing at anything. I'm dreadfully sorry. I thought I told you to stop feeling sorry for me. seem to have said all the wrong things. Yeah. Most women do. I wish there was something I could do to help him. Maybe, maybe some clean linen and a shade. Here, will you give this to him? Not me, lady. He has pride. I have a glass jaw. Not me, pal. It was all her idea. She thought she might want to shave. I don't need this. Thanks, anyway. But... I do all right. They still buy my songs. Won't you come in? Please do. Well... You know... It took a lot of courage for you to come down there. I guess I was a little rough on you. I'm afraid I asked for it. You see, I needed help. I still do. Yeah, it's tough. If I could do anything, but I don't know. Won't you sit down? Thanks.
I wish I knew more about her. What she was like. Where'd you get this? The music store on Hollywood Boulevard. You see, when I found out she was playing it that night... I've I... been thinking about that, too. Ever since you told me. Do you play? No, no. Kirk played, and I'd sing. At least we did when we were first married. He didn't do it. Knocking yourself out, aren't you? Trying to help a guy who let you down. He's in trouble. He doesn't look like a murderer, does he? They never do. This isn't the man I saw. Are you sure? Yes. There was someone else there that night. Of course there was. Kirk heard someone. But I took it for granted that the man going in was your husband. It must have been the murderer. The man who stole the brooch. Brooch? Yes. I brought him to see you, dear, because he's interested in that brooch. I thought you ought to describe it to him. Well, it was an odd sort of piece. Heart-shaped, made of rubies. You've seen it? I gave it to her when we were married. It was the only thing she left behind when she walked out. But it was there that night. Kirk saw it. It was our anniversary. I just sent it to her by messenger, hoping she'd remember. She'd have been alive today if she hadn't brushed me off. If you think I did it, you're wrong. You'd uh, recognize this other man you saw? Oh, yes, I'll recognize him. And I'll know that brooch anywhere. And here's a last-minute bulletin. The state Supreme Court has sustained the sentence of Kirk Bennett, convicted for the murder of Mavis Marlowe. He moves to the death house today. This is George Mitchell from Hollywood. He sent me his things. As if he were already dead. I gave it to him for his birthday. What do you work? They even included that. It's hers. No, it isn't. She had a double M on everything. It looks like a phone number. It's in her handwriting. Crestview 2111. Does that mean anything to you? Not a thing. There's one way to find out. Oh, it's over there. Rios, where is it? On the Sunset Strip. You know what he did, Mr. Marco? He hung up. You know what I do in your place? No, I'd hang up too. Stack for one little needle. Hey, you. This goes to Mr. Marco's private office. Sorry, just looking for the phone. It's right over there. Thanks a lot. Right, all right. Could that be the man you saw? I 
can't tell from here. Should we dance over? Let's keep looking. I like it. I'm coming down the stairs. Check, please. Who's the gentleman you were just talking with? Mr. Marco. Owns the place. Would you happen to know how often Mr. Marco changes the talent in his floor show? He has auditions every Monday afternoon for professionals. Mr. Marco is going to have company starting Monday. Professionals. What do you mean? Carver and Martin. Relax, Kathy. Don't forget I put Mavis over. You've worked hard and you're going to do all right, so relax. Suppose somebody recognizes me. Oh, stop worrying. Why do you waste your time listening? Well, I'm a dreamer. Someday I hope I'll pick up something good. Cheap. But that's not it. That's enough, thank you. That's enough, thank you. Carver and Martin, you're next. That's us. Thank you. I don't care what they say Go bandy my name about In the end it's bound to pay You're in the swing when nothing daunts you Once you're in demand, the whole world wants you Long as I'm a big I mean. sensation Tell them you can't compete with busboys and make it strong I'm sorry, but those busboys, I can't compete with them Don't you hear? Keep quiet. Yeah, keep quiet. Hey, that goes for you, too. All right, madame. Go ahead. I want to be talked about. I don't care what they say. Go bandy my name about. In the end, it's bound to pay. You're in the swing when nothing daunts you. Once you're in demand, the whole world wants you. Long as I'm a big sensation, I can get along on my reputation. I want to be talked about. It suits me to a T. Cause I'll have nothing to squawk about as long as they talk about me. Sticks and stones won't break my bones, and names will bring me fame. A man in the hand is worth two in the arms of some other day. I want Don't you know it's not polite to stare? I've seen her somewhere, but it's still not polite. Talk 
talk about as long as they talk, 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 talk about me. Tell him to come over. Mr. Marco, oh, I think... Look, I don't slug and you don't think. Is that a deal? Yeah. Now, will you tell him to come over? Mr. Marco wants to see you. Your name is Miss... Uh... Carver, Catherine Carver, and this is my partner, Jack Martin. How do you do? Nice to know you. I hate them. Make so much noise. Let's go up to my office. with you. Sit down. I like your performance very nice. Thank you. Very nice, too. Hey, incidentally, uh, I write all of Miss Carver's material. Well, naturally. Thank you. What was your last engagement? Seattle. How much have you been getting? Two hundred. Two hundred? But of course, we might take a little less for the opportunity of working here. Huh? Take less? No, no. That won't be necessary. I was just wondering why two artists as talented as you are should ask so little. Funny I haven't seen you before. Well, shall we say 200 a week? All right. After that, who knows? Hi, Professor. Good morning, Mr. Marco. I brought you some flowers, Kathy. Thank you, Marty. Where do you keep uh, something to put them in? Oh, oh, uh, a vase. Here we are. They're lovely. Oh, I thought they might kind of brighten up the place a little.
like it, Kathy? Love it. Read the words. Time will tell how much you mean. Will love keep growing? Time will tell. There seems to be no way of knowing. Everything you've done for me. Well, you haven't exactly kicked me in the face, you know. Kathy. Yes. If we find the brooch and Kirk is cleared. We'll find it. Sure. You stuck by him. And when he gets out of all this, you won't do him a thing. Let's go through it once, shall we, Marty? Sure. Wonderful. Thank you. Martinis, please. Ready? How about a drink? Two cokes. Let me up. Say, I see you made Mitchell's column this morning. No. What Sunset Strip Cafe operator, heretofore billed as a woman hater, is belying his billing and cooing at the spot's new thrush. Where does he get such drivel? Freddie, do you mind? This is kind of private. Oh, not at all. I phoned it to him. You what? I was hoping to get closer to that safe. That's the hard way, isn't it? I have to get into it, Marty. No matter how. Mr. Markle wants to see you. 
Me? Right now. You wouldn't know what this is about, would you? You better go up to his office. No, 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 Mitchell. I'm not complaining about the story. You, you know I love to be in your column, but why didn't you use my name? Who wants to be a puzzle? <laughs> Hello, Catherine. Come in. Oh, no. Huh? Oh, uh, by the way, uh, who tipped you off? Oh, anonymous lady. Another puzzle, huh? Well, thank you very much, George. I'll be seeing you. You know, sometimes I, I find myself surrounded by puzzles. Like he said you wanted to talk to me. Uh-huh. Come here. Something that might interest you. Why don't you open it? It's lovely. It is? Then it's yours. Don't worry. It's my business to clip people, so why shouldn't I give a clip to somebody I like? Any reason why you shouldn't accept it? Oh, Martin. Well, I thought your association was strictly professional. Oh, yes, we're... we're just partners. Oh, it's good. Hmm. Look, isn't it nice? Thank you, Mr. Marco. Oh, I forgot. I'm so careless. And now he is really something. I've been saving it for a very special occasion. Mitchell. Hello, Freddy. I haven't been in lately. Well, I've been taking in some of the new spots. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Jack Martin. Uh, Carver and Martin. Uh, this is Mr. George Mitchell, Jack. Happy to know you. Hi. Want to be the usual? Yeah. <laughs> Say, um, who's the doll with Marco? Miss Carver, my partner. So that's the girl. You are Miss Mitchell? Mouse. Thanks. Well, cheers, Freddy. Nice meeting you. Hello, Mr. Mitchell. How are you, Charles? Hi, Marco. Why, hello. Won't you join us? Thanks. Miss Carver, may I present the most harmless man in town, George Mitchell. Oh, the columnist. How do you do? I do all right. Tell me, haven't I seen you somewhere? Seattle? No. Well, I'm afraid not. This is my first engagement in Los Angeles. Well, my mistake and hard luck. Say, I dropped in to see if you'd like to go to the bowl tonight. I've got a couple of tickets. Which on? Oh, Shostakovich, isn't it? The seventh. Good exercise for your musical appreciation. He yeah, is very tempting, but thank you just the same. Okay. Some other time. Why don't you go? It'll do you good. I'll be here when you get back. Sure. Maybe I can dream up a nice plug for her. And of course, for Rio's. <laughs> Who am I to turn down free advertising? Perhaps an evening with Shostakovich might prove very enlightening, huh? <laughs> be a good girl, Catherine.
Where'd they go? To the bowl. Good. Marty, that columnist was at the trial. He might have recognized me. We've got to risk that, Caddy. This looks like the ideal moment. What's the combination? No, Marty. That's my job. If anyone's gonna stick their neck out from now on, it's going to be me. You can't, Marty. You go on for dinner music in a minute. That can wait. No, Marty. Well, I'll keep an eye on him. If he starts up these stairs, I'll segue into Moonlight Sonata, right? Thanks. Having a sandwich here. Yeah. Look. So this is why you want me to go to the concert, Mrs. Bennett. George Mitchell told you. What do you take me for, a sucker? I knew it. I knew it all the time. Hm. All right. Where are they? You know what I mean. The box and the letter. I want them. If you knew who I was, why Look, would you... Look, Catherine, I liked you. And if Mrs. Kirk Bennett wants to make a new start, that's her business. Great respect for that. But unfortunately, I'm a very suspicious man. Why do you think I laid that little trap and let you see the combination? Simple, isn't it? Now may I have the box and the letter? Remember, Catherine, you promised me to be a good girl. Let me out of here. It's entirely up to you. And lucky. Let me go. Let me go. Go ahead. 
ahead, scream. No one can hear you. Waste paper basket. Oh. All right, that's enough, Lucky. Oh. I came in too soon. He didn't have time to open it. But you know what's in it. Yes. May I tell your husband? I'll ask the questions from here, Marco. Oh, Marty, I couldn't get the box open. Marty. Unlock it, Marco. All right, how much hush money do you want? Open that box. What's your price? Our price is what's in the box. I can take them. It might be interesting if you tried. I wouldn't. I thought you'd never get here. What did you people want to fool with Marco for? He's got an alibi. His alibi means nothing. Take a look in this box. What's in it, Marco? Nothing of any interest to you whatsoever. I'll be the judge of that. Better open it. You realize, Flood, that this is quite illegal. I agree. Open it. Who's this? It's my daughter. Are you kidding? You don't have to read it. It's only a birth certificate. Oh. It was your daughter who married That you. doesn't concern you or anybody else. Listen, Flood. I want nobody to know that she's the daughter of a man who served time. You understand? Sure. All right. Mavis was the only one who did know. And you tried to shut her up with that 5,000. Yeah, as it turned out, I could have saved the money. Yeah. Satisfied? No ruby brooch. You just got to play detective, don't you? Do I go around playing piano? He was there. Marty saw him. Sure he did, so did I. That's where I picked him up at 10.45, more than an hour before the murder. I just wanted to have a little chat with him about a suddenly dead ex-partner of his. Didn't know anything about that, did you, Marco? You let me go, didn't you? Well, Mattis wasn't killed until after 12. He had plenty of oh, time. No, no, he didn't. I was still talking to him when the phone call came into headquarters. You mean we... All this time... Just wasted. <laughs> Let her cry it out. Nothing's important anymore. Well, that's just what I wanted to talk to you about. He's gonna die, Marty. Kirk's gonna die. You did all you could. So did I. Well, I even convinced myself he was innocent. He is. I won't give up until that roach is found. Be found. Can't you see? He took it himself and destroyed it. It was never meant to be found. Do you believe that? You gotta face it, Kathy. He killed her. They were two of a kind, Mavis and Kirk. Don't let them do this to you. You gotta go on. I can't. I just can't. That's what I thought once. Until you came along. I needed. 
hate someone. I still do. We both need someone. We need each other, Kathy. Please don't. I knew from the very beginning that you were everything I wanted and everything I'd missed. It has to be you and me, Kathy. Buddy, I can't. There's only been one man. There can only be one man. Eva. You don't mean that. I should have told you before. I just couldn't bear to have you hurt like that again. Very considerate. I'm sorry. concerned about the situation and feels something should be done immediately. In Sacramento, the fate of the bill was in doubt for some time. However, after a bitter debate on the floor, it was rejected by the legislature by a vote of 49 to 40. San Quentin Prison, Mrs. Kirk Bennett arrived by plane tonight to say goodbye to her husband, who dies in the gas chamber at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning for the murder of Mavis Marlowe, nightclub singer who was found dead by strangulation in her apartment in the exclusive Wilshire house. And now a few baseball scores. The San Francisco Seals took the Hollywood Stars into camp today by a score of eight to five. Well, hello. Where have you been keeping yourself? Remember me? I'm Millie. Millie? I know. You need a drink. Two bourbons, George. Where did you get that? Well, you gave it to me. I gave it to you? Sure. Months ago. You came in here stinkle. Put it on my dress with your own little hands. Hey, that's mine. What are you trying to do? Start something? Who are you shoving? Ah! Come on, take it easy. Ah! Ah! I'm all right, I tell you. I'm all right. You're all right. Wait. 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 No! Get his arm in there if we can.
just give me a quarter. Quarter? better? I'm all right. That's fine. Doctor, I've got to talk to you. In the morning, you can talk all you like. In the morning, it'll be too late. He'll be dead. He's That's innocent, Doctor. A little rest is all you need. Don't give me that hypo, please. I want you to call the police. Yes, yes. In the morning. But you don't understand. I killed Mavis Marlowe. Come now, don't let your imagination get the better of you. I know what I'm saying. The man who killed Mavis Marlowe has been convicted. But they've got the wrong man. I was her husband. I, I strangled her. It all came back to me just now. I'd forgotten. Because I was drunk when it happened. Because I wanted to forget. But tonight I relived it. You've got to believe me, Doctor. Well, that's possible. Korsakoff's psychosis, it's called. It's a kind of alcoholic amnesia. I can prove it. Just let me talk to Captain Flood. He knows me. Let me talk to him, please. All right. You can talk to her. Get me Captain Flood, Homicide Division, please. Homicide, Sergeant Baker. This is the county hospital, Dr. Courtney speaking. I want to talk with Captain Flood. Oh, I'm sorry, he's out on a case. Anything I can do? We have a man here who insists he killed the Marlowe woman. Yeah? What's his name? Martin Blair. Ah, oh, that's screwball. We checked on him. You better lock him up and then throw the key away. Sorry to bother you. Tell him to have Captain Flood call. You would better get some sleep. Come along. But you said you let me talk with Captain Flood. You gotta get a hold of him. You can talk to him in the morning. But you said you would. You've got to. Here, put your coat on. Doctor, wait a minute. Look, I I found it. The brooch. Here. I'll take care of it. Put down.
Kathy? Police Department. What's your number, please? Hollywood 71246. Police Department. Homicide, Captain Flood. Homicide Division, Sergeant Baker speaking. Is Captain Flood there? No, he's not. Who's this? Where can I reach him? Why, well, I don't know. Can I help you? You ask him to call Mrs. Bennett, Mrs. Kirk Bennett. Hollywood 71246. Hollywood 71246. I'll tell him. Thank you. Did you? You found it. Who had it, Marty? Who? Marty, wake up. It's me. Marty! Marty! No! Please, Marty, you've got to tell me. There's so little time. I phoned as soon as I got your message, but nobody answered. I couldn't get here till now. What's been going on? He found the brooch. Turn it over. Where'd you get this? From the woman I gave it to, after I killed my wife. You know what this means, don't you? But before we go into it, you better call someone about Bennett. I told you you had the wrong man, remember? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Captain Flood, homicide calling. 
Get me the governor's mansion in Sacramento. Hurry it up, it's urgent. Oh, Marty. Don't be unhappy, Kathy. I'm not. Carver and Martin. It was a good team. While it lasted. Hello? I've got to talk to the governor. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to wake him then.